Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I was totally not expecting to make a video today. I've actually been filming videos all day for work, but I had a good mail day and I have an unboxing for you. So you'll know from the title of this video that this is going to be an unboxing of the Philosophy Cards. Philosophy Cards is a deck that I backed on Kickstarter. It was successfully funded in January of this year, January 2020. It's been a little tiny bit delayed, but really like not substantively so, you know, a couple of months, given everything that's going on, you know, that doesn't bother me any. Um, and so I had backed this deck um, for just a, just a deck. I don't remember what all of the tiers were for this campaign, but um, I backed at kind of the standard um, deck tier. I believe it comes with a um, deck pouch as well, and there's a guidebook. So um, not any add-ons or anything like that, um, though we did reach some stretch goals with this campaign around things like cardstock. So I've been eagerly awaiting this deck uh, because, of course, you know, philosophy cards, I would want to back this deck for folks who don't know. You know, I teach in a university. Um, I, at times, teach in the philosophy department. I do have a background in philosophy. I teach feminist philosophy um, some years, um, including in the philosophy department, other departments as well. Um, I was really interested in this um, deck for that reason. And this deck is particularly uh, focused on or inspired by uh, existential philosophy. And so um, existential philosophy is a, is a body of thinking that I'm fairly familiar with. Um, that focuses on uh, human freedom, that focuses on human self-creation, the idea of creating um, one's own values and one's own life, and the idea that you know the, the world, the, the meaning that the world has is the meaning that we give to it, um, is you know, an existential idea. There are many existential philosophers. It's a very broad, um, a very broad tradition, you know, insofar as it's even able to be called that you know, full of disparate ideas. Um, I do sometimes teach existential feminist philosophy, so I'm teaching Simone de Beauvoir, The Second Sex, uh, when I'm teaching that area, and so I'm looking forward to exploring this deck. And I cut open the box so that I wouldn't be fumbling too much with, um, I say it's like I'm gonna jinx myself, so that I wouldn't be fumbling with the tape too much um, as I, open the box. I didn't want to be fumbling with scissors. Okay, I'm just going to rip it. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. Um, it is shrink wrapped inside, which is a good sign. Or sorry, shrink wrapped and bubble wrapped, both good things. So here's the box that the deck has come in. I was so prepared cutting the cardboard open and now I'm going to be thwarted. Maybe I can get into it with a pen. Okay. So I thought um, just by way of introduction, I would share a little bit of the description of the philosophy cards from the Kickstarter. So just to read a little bit of that, it says that the philosophy cards combines the structure of tarot cards with concepts from philosophy. With philosophy cards, you embrace your existential freedom and create the future you desire. Think about it like this. Traditional tarot could be understood as a way to discover our life path through self-discovery and insight into the nature of our reality. Instead of conforming to the traditional idea of finding meaning, i.e. self-perception or self-discovery, philosophy cards draws on insights from the philosophy of existentialism and related ideas that influenced existentialism, which nudge us to create our own meaning. So self-creation as opposed to self-discovery. And I really like that as a basis for a deck, um, for sure. And, you know, I felt, I feel, I feel confident in my understanding of existential philosophy um, to work with this deck. I wonder if it might be a bit of a challenging one for folks um, who don't have that background, though the Kickstarter said, you know, this could be a way to learn about philosophy as well, at least the areas of philosophy that the deck includes. Um, so maybe it would be approachable um, in that way too. So it comes in a two-piece box. 
it's pretty sturdy. Um, not the sturdiest box, but it's you know protective enough. It does not have the finger holes that I like, but um, it does slip right off, which is always good, not difficult to get out. So the deck came with a pouch, a drawstring, philosophy cards, the existential tarot deck. Um, this is a, this is like um, it's like a muslin printed fabric, and that would fit. Just out of curiosity, would that fit the box? Uh, that would be a very tight squeeze. No, but it'll fit the cards. That's cool. Um, there is an ebook guidebook that already came out, which I admittedly haven't spent too much time with. I was waiting for the cards, um, but there's also a, a guidebook that's come inside here. Philosophy cards, the existential tarot deck, embrace your existential freedom and create the future you desire. Concept and words by Melanie Machio, drawings by Tom McCloskey, graphic design by Sylvia Lesmar, theexistentialtarot.com if you want to look it up. So um, the font is very small <laughs> in the guidebook, I will say. Um, we have a foreword from Melanie who mentions that she's an artist and a philosophy professor. So when I saw that on the Kickstarter, I was like, oh, fellow, you know, fellow philosophy professor, I have to back this one. Um, and her specialization is in aesthetics and hopes that philosophy cards encourage folks to learn philosophy by presenting it in an entertaining and readable way. I also hope the philosophy cards motivates self-reflection, cultivates the imagination, and helps develop critical thinking skills. If this happens, perhaps philosophy cards will play a part in advancing our understanding of philosophy so that someday philosophy will be centrally located in our culture where it belongs. Grab a friend, talk it out, and have fun. So we have an introduction, and the introduction just talks about, again, the deck combining tarot and, and philosophy. Um, it mentions Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, I've studied Friedrich Nietzsche pre um, pretty extensively. Um, taken a full course just dedicated to Nietzsche's thinking. Okay. And she mentions um, Nietzsche philosophized with a hammer by shattering traditional philosophical concepts. Nietzsche's statement, God is dead, is a metaphor for the loss of the world as a source of inherent meaning and value. The only meaning in the world is subjective and highly personal since we create that meaning ex nihilo and impose it onto the world. We can now consider the creative role we play in fashioning the world and ourselves. Taking a cue from Nietzsche, the existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre replaced the Greek aphorism with a new one, create thyself, as opposed to know thyself, the, the Greek uh, phrase. So Nietzsche was not an existentialist philosopher, you know, per se, but um, an influence certainly. And then it goes through some um, central concepts of, of existential philosophy, like existence precedes essence, from Sartre, and then we have a discussion of the deck. The traditional deck is made up of 78 cards, major and minor arcana. I'm just trying to quickly find the, the, the parts about this deck as opposed to the kind of explanations of tarot in general, um, since I think that might be more interesting. So in the philosophy cards, instead of wands, we have the suit of will, representing the role of the will in the existential journey, ambitions, desires, drives, and passions. So that makes sense, I think. The suit of cups, we have the suit of emotion, makes sense, I think, in terms of at least my understanding of the, of the cup suit. For the suit of swords, we have the suit of reason, And for the suit of pentacles, we have the suit of action. Action is the materialization of choice and how we shape reality. And so there's, there's a longer kind of description about each of those choices in the context of philosophy and in the context of, of the deck um, that will give more um, insight into why those were chosen. Okay. And then there's a couple of choices here, um, ways of reading 
the philosophy cards. Okay, and it offers a concept-driven approach where you can read about each card in the guidebook, or an image-driven approach where you interpret based on the art, you know, from each card. But I think that for, you know, somebody who's more versed in tarot, who has associations with the cards, it's always, you know, kind of a bit of a mishmash of those. Um, and then there are some simple spreads that range from one card up into five cards. And then there's also some suggestions for um, creating your own spreads, okay? It says, consider choosing a challenge or goal, then ask questions like the ones below, and there's a list of suggestions, and draw cards to answer those questions, like a conversation with your existentialist friend. Structure the reading however you like. There are no rules except the ones you impose on yourself. I really like that. So... Then we have um, the major arcana is called the world. Um, the world kind of enco world encompasses the entire um, the entire major arcana. And for each major arcana in the guidebook, there's a quotation, a short quotation from, for the most part, um, existentialist philosophers, I think, and then also some other philosophers. There's some Nietzsche in here, some very well known ones, South. Milan Kundera, Albert Camus, Jim Morrison, Heidegger. Okay, so there's, there's a bunch of them there. And then a little bit of a description of each uh, card. And so there's a very short paragraph for each card in the minors as well. So for the majors, you get... Um, you know, this is four cards here, two on each page. And for the minors, you get, you know, kind of three sentences about each. So pretty, um, you know, good amount of information, I think, for a guidebook. Um, it is 32 pages long. Um, the font is very small. Um, and so <laughs> that's a little bit of a challenge potentially, I think. Um, and then the cards in the and the booklet just fit inside the box. I will say there's rather a lot of space inside the box. Um, they might, I worry that they're gonna rattle a bit, but um, that's because this was obviously inside the box. That's okay. And so the cards come shrink wrapped. Of course, with the philosophy deck, um, philosophy cards, this walkthrough was not, you know, knowing me it was not going to be short. Uh, so, we have 78 cards, of course, as expected. Um, and the backs already have a chip in them. Um, the backs are cool. I like that. It's very um, just, you know, abstract, plain. And because of the, the pattern of the backs, you can see on the sides of the deck um, the dark and light contrast there. Sorry if you can hear my cat sneezing in the background. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the there was a stretch goal up um, upgrading the cardstock, which I'm really glad of. It's a, I believe this is now a 330 GSM um, cardstock. It's kind of, um, it's not glossy. It's definitely... Um, a kind of smooth it's almost like the finish of like a like a US games kind of cardstock like it's got that little bit of shine um, that maybe you can tell in my lighting I'm not sure um, but it's not but it's not glossy and they slide um, really nicely which is a good start and so um, the majors in this deck I think are all renamed um, most, if not all, are renamed. So, just trying to think, how much of this do we get into? Let's just go through the cards, um, you know, do a walkthrough, and then maybe look at what um, the deck guidebook says about some of these names. So for key zero, we have the painter. 
which is certainly a name I've never seen um, for the fool. But I like that idea of the painter because it is evocative of a kind of blank canvas, right? which um, makes sense to me at least for the fool. Number one is the agent. Number two, the free spirit. And the artwork is um, kind of, I think it might actually have some um, tea staining in it as well as um, like pen, pen and ink, uh, line drawing. The free spirit. The Dionysian, or the Empress. Um, Dionysian, um, invoking Dionysus and evoking a distinction of Apollonian and Dionysian in, um, in Nietzschean philosophy. <laughs> the Apollonian, <laughs> Apollonian for number four, the Emperor. Um, this, this definitely makes sense to me. Um, for folks do, who don't know um, Nietzsche's thinking, I'm not sure if Dionysian and Apollonian are going to make sense for Empress and Emperor. Um, so maybe these are two that we can look at in the guidebook um, in the end. Number five, we have Sisyphus. Number six, the other with a capital O. The architect for number seven. Metamorphosis. The artwork is really beautiful, I think. Metamorphosis, nine. Zarathustra, of, of Z Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Nietzsche. Number 10, The Absurd. Number 11, The Eternal Return. I'll just stop and explain because um, The Eternal Return is one of my favorite uh, concepts in, a, in an aphorism uh, by Nietzsche. And The Eternal Return is, is this idea of um, reliving the same life over and over and over again. And Nietzsche asks, you know, if, if a, a kind of demon or a spirit visited you in the night and told you that you would live your same life, the same life that you're living right now, you know, repeatedly, 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 exactly the same with no changes, and this eternal return of the same, would that be something that you would welcome and celebrate? Or would it be something that would be um, a, a source of tremendous dread? Right, and, pose, and poses this question um, and then goes on to talk about amor fati, love of fate, um, you know, as, as what's required for, for the eternal return to become something desirable. Number 12 is the orphan. Number 13, la mort, death or the little death. Fourteen, thrownness, being thrown into the world. The madman. Nausea. Many of these are, are like very, very key concepts um, in existential philosophy or even like the titles of books in some cases. The spotlight. The situation. New dawn. The hammer. I love 
that. Authenticity, which is an important kind of um, aspiration in existentialist philosophy. Where I'm going to, I think, I'm finding the keywords, or not keywords, the renames of the majors for me um, are feeling like quite intuitively um, like they make sense. Where I think so far, just, you know, my this is the first impressions, right? Um, is that I think it's going to take me some time to connect in some cases the artwork, um, the artwork to the concept. So, I mean, I guess in some cases it's more obvious, like the other has has two figures. Um, whereas in others, um, it feels a bit more abstract to me. But the artwork is beautiful, and I'm really looking forward to um, you know, spending more time with it. So, we have um, the minors are, again, will, emotion, reason and action and so they're named as will one two three again these these feel really abstract to me like to get a um, three of wands from this you know Is, is very abstract. Four. Well, five, there are the five sparks there above the figure's head. And I doubt the camera is really doing these justice, but like the artwork is beautiful. I would put one of these on my wall, um, you know, in a bigger size, obviously, um, quite happily. Will six. They almost have a bit of a pipish quality with the, you know, the eight sparks for this um, fire suit of Will. And then the court cards retain um, Smith weight titling. So we have a page of will. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Knight of will. I also really like the, um, the use of, of empty space and background in this deck so far. Queen of will. And King of Will. With emotion. Represented by uh, flowers, which I think is pretty and I can make sense of. It's been so long at this point since I backed this that I don't even remember like really how much of these cards were revealed, um, you know, in the campaign, but I just was really taken by the art and of course, um, you know, the, um, the spirit of the, of the project in terms of um, bringing two things that I'm, I'm passionate about and spend a lot of my life on philosophy and tarot together was definitely, um, you know, a project that not only did I did I want the deck, but wanted to um, support as well. I 
I feel like in some ways, which is, and this is something interesting because I feel like often with decks that I like, it's like the opposite of this. I feel like in some ways with this deck, the core cards are almost like the most traditional cards in the whole deck because the minors are so abstract and the the majors are are so much renamed that these the the, the courts feel um the most traditional so we have reason for swords They're very interesting um, to look at. And once we finish the flip through, I will look at, um, that's an intense one. Um, once I'm finished this um, little flip through, I'll look at the guidebook maybe for one major, one minor, and one court and just see um, what it has to say. I'm hoping that um, maybe that will give a better idea, um, you know, if, if you're someone who's maybe considering this deck, um, you know, I, th I they have a website, I'm sure that they'll probably be perhaps selling the deck afterwards. Maybe if we look at the guidebook for each of the um, sections of the deck it will give a better idea in terms of um, how approachable this deck might might be for you um, i'm i'm feeling like like it's hard for me to know obviously like i only have my own first impressions what um you know how other folks will experience this deck um i think that the suits make a lot of sense but i'm wondering how accessible this deck will feel to people? Not sure. Stars for Pentacles is an interesting choice. Eh? And I feel like a lot of the representations of the people are quite um, are quite ambiguous. They don't really feel um, really in a lot of cases anyway very specific in terms of um, in terms of gender or, or ethnicity or even age. You know, they're they're so um, they're so abstract in that way. What a cool deck! Okay, we'll pick a. Okay, I had already said I would pick it, um, the Dionysian and the Apollonian, uh, which are the Empress and the Emperor, just to see, um, you know, how the guidebook goes um, for these concepts that might not be familiar um, for folks. So um, I mentioned for each of the cards, there's a quote. So for the Dionysian and the Apollonian, both of the quotes are going to be from Nietzsche, of course. So for the Dionysian, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. Slightly different than the translation I'm familiar with, but that's okay. Um, I know this. I know this quote well. One must have chaos in oneself to give birth to a dancing star for the empress. And so, what we have for a meaning in the guidebook here 
beyond that quote is in traditional tarot the empress represents art creativity and beauty the dionysian symbolizes a sense of drunkenness and madness that inspires spontaneity and improvisation this energy motivates creativity through chaotic emotions related to impulse and instinct rather than reason you can see where the contrast with the apollonian is going to be going the Dionysian acts with enthusiasm and ecstasy and can lose a sense of self through intoxication. The Dionysian plays a central role in how we shape our reality. Ex nihilo. I like the fact that in the guidebook, um, they've spoken both to um, the philosopher and the philosophical concept and also have spoken to, you know, the empress and the meanings that we might be familiar with in terms of the empress. So for the Apollonian, um, again from Nietzsche, so that first quote was from the book Zarathustra, and this one from The Birth of Tragedy. The image of Apollo must include that measured limitation, that freedom from wilder impulses, that wise calm of the image-making God. I think that that connects really well to the emperor. So it reads, in traditional tarot, the emperor represents structure, authority, pragmatics, and regulation. The Apollonian symbolizes our ability to define the stuff of the world, thus individualizing things and making them distinct by providing form or structure. The Apollonian is the energy by which we create our image of the world out of nothing, and in doing so, we set ourselves apart from the rest of the world. The Apollonian plays a central role in how we shape our reality ex nihilo again. So I really like this. I'm I'm going to have a great time <laughs> with this guidebook. I can already tell you. Um, yeah, and they're gorgeous. And I like that. I don't have a. Um, I don't have another card here to compare the card stock, but they're they're sturdy enough. They feel good. It feels like 330 GSM to me. Let's have a minor card to look at next. So just picking one at random to look at the book for. This is the Will 4, which would be the four of wands. So if we look at the four of will, okay, will four. In traditional tarot, four of wands represents harmony, celebrations, rewards, satisfaction. Will 4 represents our desire to create satisfaction and rewards by attuning passions, intentions, and actions. I think that that's plenty. Like, I think if this was someone's first deck, I feel like that's plenty in terms of a meaning to be able to draw some cards and look, um, you know, and look up um, what, the, what the meaning is. Where I feel like there might be a little bit of a gap for me in terms of the guidebook is the is not the connection between traditional tarot meanings and the um, you know the choice of the suits or the or the philosophical concepts that I think is connected really really well. Where I think there might be a little bit of a gap for me though, just based on on those, is between um, you know and again the five of wands same thing is between the, the concepts and the meanings in the guidebook and the imagery. I feel like the imagery feels very, very abstract. But that's not a bad thing. Um, that's not going to inhibit my um, reading of the deck at all. And I think the imagery is beautiful. So I'm happy with that. And I'm sure through working with the deck, you know, you start to find ways in which the um, imagery speaks to the meanings you know you find the little symbols you know throughout working with any deck i feel like at least in my experience so if we go to p 
page of emotion, just picking one again at random to talk about what the court cards are like. I feel like this as a page of cups is a beautiful image. You know, you have the, you think of the page like looking at, at the cup with this kind of curiosity and you definitely get that in this picture. And so for the page of emotion, we have in traditional tarot, page of cups represents prosperity. Interesting. Joy, imagination and creativity. Page of emotion symbolizes the joy we create through imagination as a way of transcending presumed facts. So there's a kind of imagination as creative um, and something that I really love, the idea, of, the, the idea of the imagination as a way of, you know, bringing about the world, bringing about the world that we envision and that we, we dream of. And I really like that the meanings in this, in this deck, and it's, you know, suited for an existentialist influence deck, that the meanings are so much about they're very choice centered. Um, they're very much um, about creation. They're very much about about um, de you know deliberate um, choosing and about um, that experience. So the meanings are not going to be, for example, about um, you know this is going to happen to you or something like that, which which sometimes you know can feel very. Um, restrictive, can feel very um, determinist, as opposed to leaving room for, um, you know, agentic living. So I really like that about this deck as well. Yeah, the Philosophy Cards by Melanie Maschio, Tom McCloskey, and graphic design by Sylvia Lasmar. I hope I'm pronouncing everyone's names correctly. Um, I'm really glad to finally have this deck. <laughs> um, I think that the estimated time of delivery was maybe August-ish. Um, but of course, there's been so many, you know, postal deliveries and, and um, places operating at reduced capacity and things like this that a delay is entirely um, fine. The communication throughout the campaign was really great. Um, it was a very smooth Kickstarter campaign, you know, in terms of the ones that I've experienced. And I'm so glad to finally have these beautiful works of art in my hands and be able to um, look through all of these works and I you know I can't help but wondering if um, the guidebook might not um, change my my uh, reading list a little bit I'm sure there are some texts um, mentioned in here that um, I haven't read in a while maybe even a few that I haven't read I'm not sure I haven't read in their entirety um, I do wish that there was a bit more of a work cited, but um, for every single uh, card, for the majors that have the different quotations from the different authors, they have provided the author's name and the, um, the book as well. So if you find um, particular particular quotes to be resonant with you or, um, you know, one that you want to read more about it, then you can, of course, follow up and uh, read about that philosopher or read um, that book. Just finding a nice um, quote to end us on. Hmm. Why not end um, on card number seven, which is uh, the architect in this deck, and the quote is drawn from Friedrich Nietzsche, thus spoke Zarathustra, which is a really, you know, intense and beautiful um, book to read, and so for the architect, we are left with the quote, for the game of creation, a sacred yes is needed. And I feel like this um, kind of encapsulates the, the feeling of, of this deck in terms of its um, existential outlook on life. So very much looking forward to working with this deck. Maybe I'll share again once I've had a chance um, to work with it and to spend more time with um, the guidebook and with 
I'll put the um, electronic guidebook on my Kindle and spend some time with, with that. And um, I'm really keen to hear, um, I'm not sure who all else um, might have backed this campaign with me, um, you know, and what your um, experience with the deck is going to be. And maybe if it's, a, if it's a deck you've chosen to learn about philosophy, I think that that would be really amazing. I'm really keen to have conversations about this deck, particularly, you know, if you're somebody who um, has got this deck coming to you or has recently received it, let me know um, what you think of this deck in the comments. Very keen to chat about this one. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.